papa. What's up guys, welcome back to my channel. For those of you who don't know me, my name is Destiny. And if you're a returning subscriber, welcome back to the family. This week's video is gonna be another wax related video. I'm gonna give you guys all the pre and post waxing tips that I find are super helpful and that will make your waxing experience so much easier. So if you wanna find out those tips, just keep on watching. But before we get into this video, I just wanna thank you guys so much for 11K subscribers. Oh my God. I can't. You guys are literally insane. Like I just put out my 10K subscriber special last Tuesday and a week later we're at 11. So thank you guys so freaking much. Like I don't know how to process all of this, but in order to repay you guys, I'm here with another wax related video. I know you guys love these videos. So this is for y'all. And without further ado, let's just get right on into it. FYI, I do have my phone on me. I'm gonna be reading off of it for the bullet points so that I stay on track, but nonetheless, that's why I'm looking at it. I have my matcha on me. Get your water, get your notebook, because you're about to learn something today. So we're gonna start with the pre-wax tips first. If you're a person who has seen a wax specialist before, I'm pretty sure they've told you this one before, but I'm gonna reiterate it because it's very important. Exfoliate, exfoliate, exfoliate before and after your appointment. So before your wax, you wanna make sure that you exfoliate at least two to three days before, not the day of, two to three days. Trust me, two to three days is the magic number. You do not wanna exfoliate too close to your appointment because you're gonna have a greater chance of irritation on the skin. If you're taking off the dead skin cells right before you get a wax, there's a better chance of you getting irritation because the wax already naturally exfoliates. So you wanna make sure that you exfoliate two to three days before to make sure that that wax goes even much smoother so this also applies if you shave if you're shaving it's also good to exfoliate at least two to three days before not the day of not right before you shave there's a greater chance of you getting like micro cuts from the razor so be very cautious about what you're doing two to three days is enough time to have a great wax Second tip I have is to check the hair growth. Your hair should be at least a quarter of an inch long. That's as long as a long grain of rice um, or longer. It could be a little bit longer than that, but no longer than like this because if it's longer than that, girl, it's gonna hurt. It's gonna hurt no matter how high your pain tolerance is, honestly. It's gonna hurt. Make your life easier. Make sure that you're staying consistent and waxing once a month if you want great results. If you are only shaving or like if you haven't ever waxed before but plan on doing it and are wondering how long you should let your hair grow out, if you shave religiously, I say wait at least two weeks of hair growth. Do not shave it. Don't touch it. Let it be. Let her go natural and then go for waxing. You want to make sure it's at least two weeks of hair growth because with shaving, your hair is already on different growth cycles. So you're most likely not going to get all the hairs out on the first time, which is totally natural. Make sure that you're staying on top of it I say by about the third fourth or fifth wax is usually the time around when all those hairs are starting to come out together which is a good thing it does take some patience especially if you've been shaving for many years and are transitioning into waxing it's gonna take a few waxes before you get all those hairs out just letting you know beforehand but trust me it's part of the process it's gonna take a few waxes before that happens but trust me girl it's gonna be worth it third tip I need you to wear loose fitting clothing to your appointment. If you're doing it at home, stay in loose fitting PJs all day, like loose fitting pants. You can even go commando. I definitely recommend that because you need that skin to breathe. There's no reason why you need to wear tight underwear before or after a wax appointment. You're asking for irritation. You're asking for a possible infection. You should not be wearing skinny jeans to your appointments. There's no reason. There is no reason there's no reason okay especially if you're just starting out you're gonna feel like sore in the area that's been waxed especially if you're doing Brazilian you're gonna feel it afterwards it's gonna feel a little bit heavy because you put it through some trauma you know it waxing is not like an easy thing to do it does take some practice so make sure you're taking care of the skin and treating it the way it should be treated next tip I have is to keep the skin moisturized so you want to make sure that you're moisturizing regularly and not waxing dry skin if you're waxing dry skin there's a greater chance of those hairs breaking which wastes your time because now you have to wait a few more weeks in order for that hair to get back on its growth cycle which is highly annoying especially if you've been waxing frequently to the point where you're having great results moisturizing 
thicker skin equals supple skin and supple skin equals a greater waxing experience so you want to make it as easy as possible for yourself make sure that you're moisturizing the area and I mean moisturize everywhere if you're a client that does Brazilians very frequently moisturizing the area is definitely gonna help you out a lot of people don't know but you should be moisturizing your lady areas even if you're a guy you should be moisturizing those areas too you want to make sure that that skin is moisturized because that means healthy skin and healthy skin is less prone to irritation and growth hairs and all that stuff so stay on top of it and take care of yourselves another tip I have is to cleanse and powder the skin before waxing I did this in my DIY sugar wax video and I stressed the importance of cleaning making sure the skin is clean and dry before um, putting wax on top of it which is really important so you want to make sure that you're not using baby powder a lot of people were like oh my god what's wrong with baby powder what's this controversy it's known to lead to cancer I'm not sure about the specifics do your research on that but I only use cornstarch for waxing just to be safe it's also a great alternative for a baby powder Guys, I've been trying to perfect my matcha recipe. This is a little off topic, but either way, I'm going to share it with you guys um, because I talk too much. But this is my matcha recipe. I've been working on this for quite a while, and it's getting good. It's getting better by the day, and I'm really proud of it. If you guys want my matcha recipe, let me know in the comments. I might make... Uh, what I eat in a day video soon so I'll be sure to add that in there if you guys want that recipe so let me know so the first tip I have regards to sugaring if you are sugaring yourself you want to make sure that you have a damp cloth for afterwards to remove any excess sugar if you want to just jump in the shower after sugaring yourself because it does leave around quite a bit of residue because it is just sugar lemon and water um, but you do not want to keep any of that sugar on your skin it might hold some bacteria some excess hairs from waxing yourself so make sure that you just rinse that all off make sure that the skin is nice and clean to ensure that you do not get any type of irritation or ingrown hairs you want to treat the waxed area with aftercare so um, I used to use witch hazel at a point I've tried tea tree and jojoba oil like a mix together because both are carrier oils and then aloe vera my top one that I swear by to this day is the mix of tea tree oil and jojoba oil it's literally held me down all the time if I have an ingrown hair if I see one starting to Get itself onto my skin i put that there for a few days and it goes away like it does not give me any problems if i have it ingrown it helps it come out a little bit easier so i definitely recommend to try that out i'm gonna actually give me one second i'm gonna go and get my tea tree and jojoba oil so that you guys can see what i do so give me one second <laughs> I am back bitches okay <laughs> so this is the tea tree and jojoba oil that I'm using these are new brands I'm just starting to use them recently because the old ones that I used to use are not sold on Amazon anymore for some reason so I'm trying out some new brands and I will let you guys know probably in editing this video once I've used it for a little longer or in the description so check the description of this video to get some updates on these products and how they work um, but usually I pick pretty good products I do not um, buy anything that is not 100% so make sure that you are getting 100% of these oils and nothing added in there you do not want to put any type of additives on your skin so this is a tea tree oil that I got let me take it out of the packaging actually so that you guys can see a little bit better and one cool thing about this is that it comes with a dropper let me see and this is the brand handcraft blends i got all of this off amazon and i'll link it in the description box below but this is the tea tree oil that i use right now and then i mix that with the jojoba oil from Livin rose this is also off of amazon and guys this literally lasts me forever and i got these little bottles in dollar tree literally a dollar for two packs so my boyfriend also used these as well i fill this dollar bottle with these two oils and i use it on a cotton round and put it on the wax areas or any type of area that i'm trying to treat and moisturize and guys it's it works like wonders if i have a zit sometimes i'll put um 
this on a little q-tip and I'll spot treat that area and it helps with my breakouts as well so this is a great natural remedy to prevent and treat ingrown hairs moisturize the skin literally it's so soothing and it gives a nice cooling feeling I definitely recommend it for my sensitive skin people like me and like I said I'll put the updates on how these products are working for me in the description box below so tea tree oil and jojoba are my lifetime lifesavers they're my holy grails and I'm sharing them with you because I love you and yeah second thing for sensitive skin you can use aloe vera so I've seen people use the gel uh, but sometimes you don't really know what they put in those gels unless you're really sure that it's 100% organic which is a little bit hard um, but if you have aloe vera plant at home that's even better like just take it out rub it on top of the treated area leave it for a bit and then rinse it off um, so that's also another natural remedy to soothe any type of skin especially after waxing the skin is a little bit sensitive and a little bit raw so you want to make sure that you are soothing it properly so if you do not have this aloe vera works as well and like i said before witch hazel is also another option one thing about witch hazel though some people complain that it does dry out their skin so i experienced that only on my face i used to use witch hazel as a toner and it did dry me out just a little bit so i stopped using it as a facial toner but i still did use it after waxing sometimes because it was nice and clean and it didn't give me any breakouts so you can try it. I used to use it when I first started waxing, but since I tried the jojoba and tea tree oil mix, I haven't gone back. But if it's something that you want to try, I definitely do recommend it. Just be wary of that detail. So my next tip. You want to make sure that you're using this aftercare regimen consistently in order to see the best results. If you are prone to ingrowns and are not exfoliating, not using aftercare, you can't expect the ingrowns to get better just by you living like I'm sorry sis it's not gonna happen you have to actually treat the area and if you want to do it naturally tea tree and jojoba oil are a great alternative to heavy chemicals and stuff like that so if you don't want to invest in some expensive products because you're not sure if they will work I recommend going the natural first trying these things out and then seeing how your skin reacts to it remember what works for me does not work for everyone so make sure that when you try any type of new product even if it's a natural remedy test patch it on your skin first make sure that you have no type of reaction towards it because you never know so being consistent with your aftercare is really important I know how hard it can be to exfoliate like two to three times a week like we're supposed to keep up with everything it's normal to fall off I get that but at least being consistent for the first week after your wax can definitely make a difference and after that first week doing it at least two to three times a week or every other day or every three days you know what I mean whatever works for you but staying on top of it that first week is definitely gonna help because that's when your skin is most sensitive and that's when the follicles are most open because there's no hair at all in there so doing it that first week is definitely gonna help a little bit more than if you're not doing it at all so that is another tip for you guys so my next tip is to wear loose fitting clothing like I said in the pre wax tips same thing goes for post waxing you want to make sure that you're letting that skin breathe and not wearing like lace underwear 100% cotton would be better to make sure that that skin really is breathing and you also do not want to add any friction to the waxed area for at least two to three days if you're a person that works out really frequently I recommend working out before your wax showering and then going to get that wax done going home and then just relaxing letting that skin breathe if you are working out after your wax you're asking for bad results any type of sweat dirt or debris can get into those follicles and cause irritation ingrown hairs infection so you do not want to put your body through that trust me I've seen many clients that do this and regret it in the long run so you want to make sure that you're doing all of your fitness activity before you're waxing so that you can just relax and I'm sorry no one wants to hear this and no one really um, explains this at least on YouTube that I've seen so as a licensed professional I feel like this is something that a lot of people need to hear if you are waxing like a Brazilian you're getting everything out of there you should not be adding friction to the area for at least two to three days and you know what I mean by that no hanky-panky girlfriend like none big no ma'am no ma'am. You do not want to be having sex the first few hours after your wax, even the first day or two. Like I'd say to be safe, wait at least three days. I know that sounds crazy, but honestly, if you think about it, it makes sense. Uh, your skin is going to be open. And if you are putting that skin on top of another person and 
going at it, there's a good chance that you are going to get irritated, there's a good chance that you're going to get ingrown hairs, and there's a good chance that you can possibly get infection. So you want to make sure that you are waiting at least two to three days to let that skin breathe and kind of heal from the trauma that you put it through, especially if you're getting a full Brazilian. Like, that's a lot of trauma to the skin. Even if you've been doing it for a while, the skin is going through something when you're waxing it. It's not a natural thing to do, really. So you want to make sure that you're taking care of that skin and being really safe with your body next you want to exfoliate at least two to three times weekly like i said sometimes you fall off and that's okay as long as you are trying to exfoliate at least once to twice a week that's going to help you especially if you are a frequent waxer you want to make sure that you're taking any type of dead skin off the surface so that the hair that's trying to grow from underneath the skin can actually penetrate through the skin and comes to the surface sometimes lack of exfoliation is the reason why people get so many ingrowns because the layer of the skin is not being exfoliated not getting dead skin taken off and that hair cannot grow and pass over that skin barrier so you want to make sure that you're exfoliating and that can be with an exfoliating mint from the store I've seen them I see them sold everywhere literally and then another exfoliating option is a scrub sometimes those can be a little too aggressive just be very gentle when you're using a scrub and there's also like loofahs and stuff but with loofahs you want to make sure that you are switching them out every few weeks because they do harbor lots of bacteria make sure that you're washing yours out very thoroughly before putting it on your skin especially a freshly waxed area but nonetheless there's lots of exfoliating options out there do some research and find out which one would be easiest for you my next tip would be to hydrate and take care of your skin and stay consistent with it so I know everyone's like, drink more water, drink more water, but literally drink more water, sis. Supple skin equals an easier wax experience. I cannot stress that enough. If you have hydrated and moisturized skin, those hairs are going to come out so much easier than if you do not take care of that skin and it's dry. Those hairs will definitely break off and then you're wasting your money and your time to get this waxing done to not have great results. So if you're going to go through the pain, sis, like I said before, do it right. <laughs> like just do what you gotta do take care of the skin because you can't expect the wax specialist to do all the magic work for you it's up to you as well rightfully so so take care of your skin because once that hair is off you need beautiful skin to show off anyway so make sure that you take care of it and your body will thank you please make more please make more just like that make more of your stuff that sounds ve it sounds very uh, chill yeah, very mellow like Ethereal? You're not trying too hard. And those are the end of my tips, but I wanted to bless you guys just a little bit more. And I reached out to one of my good friends, Elisa. Hi, Elisa, if you're watching this, she is a licensed esthetician. I'm a licensed wax specialist. She's actually the reason why I got into waxing in the first place. So I thought it would be great to reach out to her and ask her for some of her tips that she thought would be helpful for you guys for a pre and post waxing. So I know how important it is to get tips from licensed professionals professionals so I reached out to her and asked her for some of her tips and I'll read them out to you guys so thank you Elisa for giving me some of these tips for my subscribers and anyone else who's new watching today one of the tips she gave was to keep the skin as dry as possible with any type of waxing any moisture on the skin will not help the wax adhere so use powder before waxing and after if you have hairs left over the powder will help illuminate the finer hairs which is true I practice this as well with my clients like especially for waxing services on the legs um, if you see that you're doing a strip or two and then you have some stragglers left over put some powder on the skin and it's gonna help you see those finer hairs that are right there that's a great tip Elisa thank you for sharing that another one she had is if you notice ingrowns you can use a very fine tweezer and carefully get them out if they are visible which is true so if you have ingrown hairs, make sure that you're using an ingrown hair extractor like a tool, not a regular tweezer. So they sell them on Amazon for really cheap, but make sure that you're not removing an ingrown hair that is not visible. It should be visible to the skin in order to take it out. So if you see the ingrown hair right there underneath the skin, then it's a go to go in there and take that ingrown hair out. But if it's just a red bump and you do not see any hair in there, do not go digging, do not try to 
pop it do not try to dig in there and extract the ingrown hair it's not gonna come out well and you're gonna scar your skin so make sure that you're being very careful get the proper tool and if you see the hair then you can remove it another tip that she gave is if you're doing underarms you want to make sure that you do not use deodorants after and clog your pores which is a valid statement if you are waxing your underarms I'd say use a tea tree and jojoba mix because one, it's great for aftercare, two, it smells amazing and it's a natural deodorizer. So if you know that you're going to go somewhere after you're getting wax done, do the tea tree and jojoba mix because it actually smells good and it's not going to clog your pores. It's non comedogenic but do not use a stick deodorant or a spray deodorant after your wax because it will clog your pores and cause ingrown hairs. I hope these tips were helpful and that they seem doable even for the laziest of people. Like I know girl, I know sometimes it's hard to exfoliate every other day. Like I know it can be tedious at times. You don't have the time, you're tired. I get you, I've lived through this, but trust me, if you keep up with it, your skin will thank you. If you suffer from ingrowns, discoloration, anything like that, keeping up with these tips is definitely gonna help you. Just remember that perfect skin does not just happen overnight. It takes time and consistency, but it can happen in the comfort of your own home. And I'm a living representation of that. I live by these tips. If you guys have any questions, let me know in the comments. But with that, I end today's video. If you guys found this video helpful at all, don't forget to give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't already, please consider subscribing to my channel. It definitely helps me out to continue to make content for you guys. And while you're at it, make sure that you hit that little notification bell so that you're notified every single time I post a new video and until next time bye guys mm -hmm.